What is up YouTube, Skiz1 here, and have you ever wondered if your outlines would look cleaner, or if your hand style would look sharper if you were maybe using a cap that you are more comfortable with? Well, today we are going to answer that question as we do the ultimate graffiti spray paint skinny cap comparison and see what each of these skinny caps works best for. I'm going to demo all of these skinny caps here for you guys, and we're going to be comparing these by spray consistency, spray width, and line hardness, which is is if the line has a hard edge and therefore is good for clean consistent outlines or if there is some deviation in spray path and you get sort of a fuzzy line. After the demo, I'll also give you a bit of information that you can't tell just by looking at how these caps spray. For this, I'll draw from my personal experiences and tell you some information about these caps that'll help you decide which cap is right for you. Now today, we're particularly interested in two newly released skinny caps on the graffiti market, those being the cream cap, and the flame skinny cap. But we're going to be comparing these to some standard skinny caps for a bit of context, those being the Montana Level 2 cap, the Molotow Super Skinny, and the classic Lego Thin cap. Also, if you guys do want to pick any of these caps up for yourself, I have links in the description to some of them that I could actually find good deals on. And if you do buy from my links, it does help to support the channel. And for that, I give a big thank you. For the demo here today, we are using a flame orange can, which is a fairly high pressure can and will help us to see which of these caps have any sort of spray deviation in them, things like that. It will really expose the cap's weaknesses. So first up, we're taking a look at the new cream cap here and right away you can see it's a very controllable cap no overspray happening there and it's nice and comfy on the trigger finger you can very controllably spray lines between about i'd say a quarter of an inch and an inch with the cream cap you can see you could definitely do worse than using this cap. It's overall a great consistent high quality cap spraying lines with nice hard edges for outlines on detail work. Next we've got the Flame Skinny Blue. Admittedly there should be a slight performance advantage when using a branded cap on the same brand can, but I didn't really find that that was the case with the Flame Blue. It seems like it has a much higher output and is only really happy spraying at less than a half inch any bigger and the line edges start to go fuzzy you'll see that compared to the other caps when their lines are all sprayed next to each other but as you can see this is great for small detail and highlight work i put a few tiny details in the tag for deca just for a little example there shout out to deca next up we're testing out the molotow skinny here you can get lines comfortably that are between a quarter inch and three quarter inches i would say the molotow skinny doesn't have as hard an edge as i personally would like so i don't use them too much but again this is a good enough cap for using on the not too important outlines or for highlighting with detail also is a fun one if you want some particular tag effects i will say this it definitely has a very round consistent dot as you can see on the detail work example there here you're seeing the Montana level 2 cap. I have a link in the description to where you can find the level 1 and the level 2 by Montana. Those are the two skinniest Montana caps. The level 2 has arguably the hardest edges and lines of the skinny caps here with great controllability and consistency and consistent spray pattern. It's very easily controllable and works within the half inch to 1.5 inch range. This is a great cap for piecing. There's no two ways about it. You get those nice consistently round dots with this as well as you can see up next here we've got a classic i'll link it below as well if you want to pick some of these up the lego thin cap being an old school cap it isn't going to give you those super skinny lines that these new skinny caps will that were developed specifically to be the skinniest of all caps but as you can see here the 0.5 to 2 inch range is a comfortable zone for it to lay down some lines fairly aggressively by aggressively i just mean the output is quite high on this cap comparatively but these old school caps don't become old school by having anything less than superb quality and consistency. That's how they get their name and their place as an old school cap in the mind of the graffiti writer. And that is no different with the Lego Thin Cap. It has great consistent hard lines, very controllable, very hard edges as you can see on screen, very controllable for an intermediate writer. You can even get some mini flares fairly easily here too, which is a nice fun little effect for a skinny cap. Alright, so now I actually want to 
sort of answer the question I posed at the beginning of the video and sort of try and tell you guys what I use each of these caps for, how they each feel for me in particular, and that might help you guys sort of figure out, hey, should I try a new cap next time I have to pick some caps up for a piece or something like that. What I'm trying to do here a little bit is just give you guys a feel for the differences between these caps because obviously they are all very, very high quality caps. So really the feel of them is what is going to help you decide which ones you want, which ones you are sort of not interested in using, that sort of thing. The cream cap here, very, very controllable. Uh, I found right away that it wasn't the kind of cap that you need to sort of really, really be super alert to use. It's a nice, thin outline cap. I was comfortable right away using this for outlines. I would trust this cap to be used in outlines for good pieces and murals that I was doing for clients on commission work or something like that. Conversely, a little bit here, the actually flame skinny blue was a little bit too skinny, I would say, for outlines. It's actually so skinny that I would say it's almost just like one step above using the mosquito cap. If you don't know what the mosquito cap is here, I have a link in the cards in the corner there where you can check a review of this out. So this is sort of the kind of cap here that you do have to be really alert to use. I would use it for very small area detail work, but definitely probably not even any kind of outlines, to be honest, unless maybe I'm doing like a very small piece on say a canvas or something like that. That might be a good use for that kind of cap there. The output is a little more than say the cream cap or a couple of the other caps here too. And generally the lines weren't quite as, generally the edges weren't quite as hard on this uh, flame skinny blue as say the cream cap or Montana level 2 cap or really any of the others bringing us to the Montana level 2 cap here again very controllable I found there were a lot of similarities between the cream cap and the Montana level 2 and of course in their design just looking at them you can sort of tell well they are very very similar a lot of these caps here people don't actually realize they do come from some of the same factories there aren't all that many factories that go ahead and make these caps it's sort of a niche industry Moving on to the Molotow Super Skinny here. Uh, one thing I did want to mention, you can tell it's a Molotow Super Skinny by the white stem there at the bottom. It's a little bit hard to tell with these black caps that also have black dots because there are a few of them around actually. To be honest, this one I wasn't super impressed with. I wouldn't ever really use it over any of these other caps, maybe with the exception of the Flame Blue, but it really wasn't my favorite. The lines just aren't hard enough for it to be an outline cap for me. And if you're going to make a skinny cap, I think the main purpose of skinny caps in general is for them to be outline caps. So to me personally, I'm just not that impressed by this. Although the controllability of it was very nice, I do have to say. But again, that's the same with all of these caps. And lastly, our sort of benchmark cap, you could say would be the Lego Thin cap. And again, you saw the, the hardness of the lines was really, really nice. You can get much bigger lines than any of these other caps here. If you're sort of like a newer writer, this is a very, very nice cap to get used to for outlines. You don't want to go too too skinny right away because when you're just developing can control your spray path is going to deviate a little bit due to you know can operator error i guess you can say this is a really really comfortable cap to be using and you see a lot of older writers use these for outlines of say throw ups and that sort of thing just because it is that kind of cap where you can use it comfortably you can use it as a fast pace you don't need to be waking up and drinking six coffees just to make sure your eyes are, are really watching where this cap sprays maybe unlike something like the flame blue there. So that's the kind of cap that that is. And the best advice I can give really is just to figure out one cap that you really like using and use that for outlines. That's really one of the most powerful pieces of advice I can give because most writers and I would say especially most really good writers, they have a couple go-to caps especially for outlines and they pretty much just use those caps exclusively and they don't have their eyes on any other caps on the market. So I would suggest doing that. If you're looking for advice on say fat caps for fill-ins things like that i do have a video on screen right now where you can check that out i will see you over there until my next one peace